Straight to the point, I think Tom Aspinall is going to win this fight. And the reason why I'm giving you that take is for the simple fact that he is just a much more prepared athlete in comparison to, let's say, Sergey uh, Pavlovich. I'm not saying that Sergey is not going to come here prepared, but there is levels to preparation when it comes to understanding the type of training partners that you got to have, which is what Tom Aspinall has been doing, bringing in legitimate heavyweights in order to try to understand what it feels like to be in there with the top dogs in that particular uh, division and within that weight class and its firepower and strength and mass that they have to deal with in order for you to be prepared going into the cage. So I think that Tom Aspinall is locked in tight with that. And then considering the fact that if you look at his past, he's trained with lighter guys. And why is that significant? Well, because it did nothing but increase a certain level of speed awareness that he now has intact in his uh, arsenal and within his game plan. Now with Sergey, he's a knockout artist, but you're going to get countered with takedowns from Tom Aspinall. You're going to try to throw bombs Tom Aspinall will either try to counter or try to out-wrestle you based on switching levels while you're swinging and then out of nowhere, he dips under your leg and takes you down for a double leg or maybe a single leg takedown or drag you into the fence trying to control uh, Sergey Pavlovich there. Maybe he's going to have some moments in there. He is quite strong in the clinch, but very dangerous also in the dirty boxing exchanges in one of the a ways that you can describe um, Sergey Pavlovich's weapons in this particular fight because the grappling exchanges are going to happen. But somewhere down the line, Tom Aspinall is going to get hit. And if he does, how will he respond? Will he respond in a very technical way where perhaps maybe he's going to try to slip the other shots or maybe use it in a way where he's going to go in there and perhaps maybe get into a firefight with Sergey, which... On paper, it doesn't seem like the smartest thing to do. But my final prediction on this is going to be Tom Aspinall. He just has the right preparation. He also has the right way of, let's say, recovering for uh, training uh, sessions. In other words, if you notice, one of the things that he did in one of the countdown videos is that he's walking backwards. And there's this doctor somewhere on the internet, something about uh, Dr. Uh, toes, knees, touch, something to that extent where he basically talks about how to recover from uh, certain sports injuries. And one of those uh, mechanisms in order to make that happen is guess what? By walking backwards in order to uh, alleviate some sort of pressure in your knees. So Tom Aspinall is doing the smallest, um, the smallest uh, things that he needs in order to, let's say, recover the smallest details in his nutrition and also just how he's able to prepare his body movements coming off of his surgery, which, by the way, is an important part of the story. Now, why is that? Well, obviously, Tom Aspinall had a little bit of that accident going on in the Curtis Blades fight, right, which put him out of commission. Then he had to get surgery. And then after that, he had to come back and rebuild himself. Not only did he rebuild himself, he was also using certain methods to get his body right back on track. Now, with Sergey Pavlovich, he was also doing the same thing. He was in there um, speaking with the people of uh, the PI Center, uh, trying to get all his measurements, trying to uh, understand his uh, rapid rate of uh, trying to move. Um... And all these things that uh, they needed, the small little details that they needed in order to get this uh, going for their body mechanics, right? Um, so this is a very strong evolution in, let's say, sports science. It's almost kind of Dr Ivan Drago-esque in a way. But the interesting thing about this is that it will produce some real firefights and some back and forths, and some 50-50 matchups. So even though I see this as a one-way streak for Tom Aspinall, in all honesty, I really see this as a 50-50 firefight that Tom Aspinall has to really get through. So I'm going to say that it's going to go to Tom Aspinall by third-round decision.
that's how I see this fight. And I'm glad that I was able to give you this one round prediction. And don't forget to like and subscribe, inshallah. And enjoy the fights this coming weekend, UFC 295. I will come back and react to it so long as you like and subscribe.